Hello, this is Mr. Huff. Let's talk about simple beam analysis. Um, I'm having some students that are having some challenges with this, so I just want to go through and kind of talk through very slowly and make sure we understand what we're doing as we go. So this is our beam diagram. This is a pinned connection. So what this would act like is imagine a clock face. And this would be like the minute hand, and it would be pointing at the number three. Let's call it the hour hand. So it would be pointing at three o'clock, and this would be a point of rotation. This is fixed so that if you put any forces up and down or left and right, you would have a reaction force in the X and Y axis. On this end is a roller. So if you have any forces applied, it can push uh, up and down, so this will support, but any left and right motion will not be resisted. Uh, this is the typical setup for a beam, and it lets us do this math correctly. In this case, we have a beam that has a mass per foot or a weight per foot, and then we have a point load occurring right here. So we have two forces pushing down. We have this point load and the weight of this beam, and we have two reaction forces, this one holding the beam up and this one holding the beam up. Once we understand this drawing, we can draw a free body diagram, and it's gonna look like this. So we'll have the beam, and we'll also note that it has a uniform load. Uh, there's another way to do this where it's a series of little arrows, and I really haven't done that. We just know that this beam is consistently, uh, it has a weight as well. Uh, we also need to recognize that this is point A and point B. So at point A, we have a force in the Y direction going up, and at point B, we have a force in the Y direction going up. And then we also need to recognize there are some distances involved here. So as you learn things about this, it's important to go in and label what you know as you go. So I'm not gonna be doing that in this example. I'm focusing mostly on the mathematics. All right, so the problem might sound like this. We have a point load of 500 pounds right here. Uh, it is six feet from this end, and from here to point B, it's another 10 feet, so the length of this beam is 16 feet. This beam has a uh, weight distribution of 80 pounds per foot, and it's 16 feet long, so the total weight of this beam is 80 times 16, or 1,280 pounds. There are no forces acting in the X direction, so there's nothing pushing to the left or to the right. And that is something that civil engineers will need to consider, but we're doing a simple beam right now, so we're not worried about that. Uh, so if we look at this, if we add all the forces together, um, okay, I guess I need to clarify why we do this. This beam is not moving, it's static, and it's in equilibrium, and that means there's no motion. So if there's no motion, the sum of your forces has to equal zero, and the sum of your moments also has to equal zero. And there's uh, laws in physics that talk about that. You can think about Newton's third law. For every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force, and that's what we're talking about here. So in the y direction, there are two forces pointing down. That's the point load and the uniform load. And there are two reaction forces pointing up, the one at point A and the one at point B. And using Newton's third law, we know that the total of those forces have to equal zero. So let's look at what that means. I'm gonna make these a little bigger. So that means the sum of the forces is gonna be zero. So the reaction forces, which are positive because they point up, minus the load forces, which point down, and that up or down decides if it's a positive or negative, that total is gonna be equal to zero. So now we can go in and replace these uh, terms with the numbers that we know. And we get that, we can plug in the 500 and the 1200 here, or 1280. And that means that we can, re now we can rearrange this to have an equivalency. We can move the numbers that we know to the right side of the equation and determine what the total forces uh, of reaction forces are. So FYA and FYB are equal to 1,780 pounds. So that is the total reaction force pushing up. So think about it like this. You have 1,780 pounds of load. That's the point load and the uniform load pointing down. And the reaction force are holding up exactly that much weight. 
So those two have to balance out, and that's what we mean, the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So now we can use the sum of moments to find the reaction force at point B. So before we start, we need to notice that the center of gravity of the uniform load is at the center of that beam. So if we take 16 feet and divide it by two to find the middle of the beam, that's where our uniform load is going to be. If we reduced it to a single point, it's going to be at the center of gravity, and that's what we're concerned with for this calculation. So we can also think about if uh, the force at A and B, the reaction forces are pushing up, and that's also would cause a counterclockwise rotation if we let it go, if we took the point loads off and it was still being applied, then th those forces were still being applied, it would rotate counterclockwise, that's gonna be positive. The loads are pushing down, so those are negative, and they would also cause a clockwise rotation and uh, that means that those moments are going to be negative. Let's go look at that. Pretend this is a clock and this is, is pointing at the hour three. If we took away these forces and this force could push up, it would go counterclockwise. This force, if it were, if we took the roller away, if it could push, it would push down and it would go clockwise. So up is positive, down is negative. All right, so now that we've got that out of, the, out of the way, we can talk about the sum of the moments is equal to zero foot-pounds, okay? So I'm gonna use, I have a little clarification here. I'm just gonna use D for all the distances. I could have gone in and put all the subscripts to make it accurate, but really you're just thinking about what the distance is from FYA, that point A at the left, to that center point of that uh, next force. So look at how we plug these in. So if we look at this formula, we can see that FYA is the origin, so it's zero. FYB is at the end of the beam, so it's 16. The point load is six feet from point A, and the center of gravity of the uniform load is eight feet from point A. So we just replace these distances with the distances they are in your diagram. And um, again, I'm pointing out that that center of gravity of the uniform load is at eight feet, one half of 16. All right, now we plug in the rest of the things that we know. That means that uh, we don't know F A FYA or FYB, but we do know the point load and the uniform load. And since we're gonna multiply the force at point A by zero, we can cancel it out. So we end up with a formula that looks like this. And now we can solve, we can use this portion to solve for the reaction force at point B, okay? So we do a little bit of algebra here. Let me, so we multiply some things together, or we start with this. So here's our basic formula. We move, we add these numbers to both sides, so they move to the opposite side of the equal. And then we add these two together, and we divide it by 16. And then we end up with the force, the reaction force at point B is 827.5 pounds. So we move them to the other side, add them together, divide by 16, there's your answer, okay? Now we have one more thing to find. So earlier we learned that the sum of the reaction forces is equal to 1,780 pounds. Go back and look over your work. And we're gonna replace, we're gonna replace the uh, FYB with the number we just found, and then we rearrange this with a little bit of algebra to solve for FYA. And so if you take this and subtract it from both sides, and then do this subtraction here, you get that FYA is 952.5 pounds, okay? We have finally got everything we've needed. So one of the things I wanna point out, notice that the reaction force closest to the point load is higher, so if your arrow is here, this reaction force is gonna be greater than that one. If it's further to the right, then this reaction force will be greater than this side. And if it's exactly in the middle, your life is easy because these two are exactly the same thing, okay? Uh, and this is what it should look like on your paper. You should go through and list what you're doing. I have a lot of people that are not putting enough information down and they're getting confused about what the numbers mean. 
So track it through like this. It should look like this. I should, should see some evidence of formulas and your calculations, what you're putting in the calculator. Again, formulas to show your line of thought. Your substitution is super important in this step and some calculations along the way. Highlighting what you learn as you go, circling these results. And then again, your formula and your substitution and your final answer. Your work should not look like this, okay? Don't just throw numbers down on the paper without the formulas. Use your formulas and your life will be golden. All right, this is a quick run through. Let me know if you have any questions and we will go from there. Thank you for watching.